as club members, we go through the, the back entrance, the secret entrance. Uh, or maybe not. not. <laughs> or not. Oh man, I thought I was VIP. What is good? What is good, all my real ones? Welcome back to another episode of It Gets Real. Yeah, buddy, we on the road right now, and I'm fresh off of work. But the president of the Bay Area Sports Fishers Club, Steve Estrada, just hit me up to go ahead and partake in a special event going down tonight here at Bass Pro, which is basically the headquarters for the Bay Area Sports Fishers Club. We are going to be covering Gyutaku, the Japanese art of fish prints. Um, I've been seeing it a lot more as of lately. Um, my good buddy, Edward, Sir Hook the Cook, he's been getting down on some Gyutaku himself and actually been doing something a little bit different with his prints. He's been adding color. Before photography and anything like that, there would be people that catch fish and come back and tell their stories about the fish that they caught, but there was never no proof. So, Japanese came up with an idea to print out these fish that they caught, and that's where Giyu Taku was created. Uh, Giyu meaning fish, Taku meaning impression. What's How up, it gets real fast. Hey. We're back. What kind of fish is that? This is a Hawaiian trigger fish. We have the Giyu Taku master right here. Oh, not even. <laughs> What's up, bro? Hey, Flossie. How you doing, safe, brother? Safe, you see right here, man. All right, all right. Yeah, you you going to you have to show me how it's done. All right. I know you got first-hand experience in this. Let's you go. got first-hand experience in this. That's what fish you're working on, this bro. This is a parrotfish. Yeah, man. Oh. Check it out. Watch. Let me turn it over so you uh, the viewers can see the, the beautiful colors of this thing. That is a very uh, beautiful fish. Very tropical. Next on my list. Okay, so we have some of the fish right here. I see some sand dabs, a herring. It looks like a bass. You're gonna dry the fish out with paper towels really mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. And then after it's dry, you're gonna set it up like how she has it here. Okay. You support the fins with these fish. You don't need to support the tail. Okay. You just wanna support these fins here. Mm -hmm. And you could see around here how he didn't put any ink. He lifts up the this fin mm -hmm. and keeps this whole area so you get this so you get this border around the fin. So the fin stands out when you do the print. Okay. Um, don't print the eyes uh, or don't put any ink really? on the eyes. And then you'll paint all around and um, you'll use these pins and you'll 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 actually like you could kind of open up the open up these fins and mm -hmm. then use pins at an angle like that. Okay. So then after you put the ink on, then you'll drop the paper down and you'll support you put pressure right here as the paper over the paper. And then you'll pull the pins out, and then lay the lay the uh, paper down, and finish pushing the paper against the fence. So I gotta choose what fish. I think I only want to print something that I have caught before. So we have a halibut here, which I have caught. And I believe this is a petrali sole, which I have caught as well. I decided to go with the petrali sole. So first things first, we're going to dry the fish. Mm. Alright, yeah, do you think this is dry enough? Do the lick test. Well, okay, oh, no. so you're going to do multiple prints anyway. Okay. You're going to learn and mm -hmm. like Part of a valuable lesson to learning is not doing it perfect the first time. Sure. And then when you see your print and you see some wet spots, then that you'll start to see what um, you might need to work on on the next print. Okay. That's the beauty of this. You, you don't have only one shot at it, and mm -hmm. you have the pressure to make it perfect. You can always get it on the next box, on the next uh, print. That's not what right. they told us. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he did say since you weren't here that water will gravitate to the lowest point of the fish. So uh -huh. if you think about like the sockets or grooves, uh -huh. that's where the water will be most Dude, prevalent. Okay. So I've been padding this for about a good ten minutes. Here are some of the prints right here by Bruce. Pick a color and let's get you started. Uh let's see. Doing a petrali sole, so browns, 
brown <laughs> yeah brown will, brown will work okay so when you use your brush don't mix these up just put paint on the brush and get the right color combination mm -hmm. type of thing okay okay all right man we're going in i should have took them lessons because i don't know what i'm doing let's get some of this paint i'm just checking you out today oh okay there we go cool to give you a, a little hint yeah for sure instead of the like strokes mm -hmm. yeah Stipple. Yeah. Because because um that like every stroke that you when, if you did do lines, mm -hmm. it'll translate to the paper like, like little brush lines. Oh. So when you stipple it, you really get the the cool detail from the uh, the fins. Okay. See, I knew I sat by you for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not completely. <laughs> get my dab on. All right. I think I got this coated up enough to give the first attempt. So I'm going to swap out the paper. Oh man, here it is. The moment of truth, y'all. Yeah, I'm nervous. Let's put it on on there, huh? Center it. Yes, that we could hold it. You know, uh, in uh, Die Hard Fishing's videos, where he's like doing doing stuff at home. Yeah. Ooh wee, oh, this is this is crazy. Could have used a lot more ink, I think. Alright, y'all, I've been smoothing it out. Almost ready to see what this print's looking like. First time. <laughs> Look at the I know, it's a jacket. Okay, so I'm going to put this over in the other room, okay? This is too much suspense here. Oh, man. Oh. No. Too much witness. What happened here? So. Wow. You do really want to dry these fish. I think it was still a little wet. So, end up sticking on the fish. The paper <laughs> did. Almost, almost. I like it. Giving this a second Hopefully, shot. All right, so I did a good job drying it this time. Let's see? Way better. Huh? Oh, it looks like a beat now. <laughs> <laughs> There it is. All right, all right, yeah, all right. a little better. Huh? Oh no! All right, I'm happy. I'll put you a three T. A little better. Still oh, yeah. got stuff. We getting better, y'all. We getting better. Still peeling a little bit, but man, not bad. Third attempt. Like the way this was looking, y'all. Third the time's a charm, y'all. And we go to Florida probably every other year to live collect fish. And so we're chasing these parrotfish towards what we call barrier net, which is a monofilament yeah. yeah. gill net, which you know mesh. So they get hung up rather than yeah. really caught. So we're chasing these parrotfish, yeah. and, and you think you're really like bothering them because you're yeah. chasing. So here's the parrotfish going like this. This is the coral Beautiful, thing. Beautiful, man. Jump, jump, jump. Oh, really? Nice. Oh, jump. Yeah. Oh, so that was so worth it. You know, that was worth it. I did it. And a little further, poop sand. <laughs> you know, so we're not really bothering Dude, that is, them. I'll take it. That is nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. Now oh. Master Bruce. Voila. Now Master Bruce's yeah. reaction. So what what did you do different? Um I speeded up. I speeded up my process. Okay. Like you said, didn't let it dry too much. Mm -hmm. And um yeah, just got to work yeah. real fast. So what would you do differently? Like you're doing another one. I want to improve it. What what are points to improve? Let's see. If any from your perspective? Um, 
in some areas, you know, I try to even out, even it out a little bit more. Uh, I see there's some paint yeah. distribution. You mean? Yeah. Okay. Definitely, there's darker spots that I would like. Mm -hmm. You kind of see the paintbrush okay. where it hit on there a little mm -hmm. bit darker, but. Huh? Yeah. No, okay. It's pretty cool. Cool. Are you doing I'm happy with it. <laughs> we have my first print right here. Actually, I think this is the second. First one was really rough. Um, I think the ink dried a little too fast and ended up peeling some of the paper back right there. So that's why you see it's missing spots. But overall, still kind of a cool print. But third time's a charm as you can see pretty dope give taku man yeah Whew. everybody's work right here cool prints cool prints oh, you can never get too old for arts and crafts man enjoying this you know anything involving fishing to where I can learn and appreciate it that much more. It's cool how fishing within itself could bring clubs and people together to do activities like this. You know, now that this is dried some, I really like it. Yeah, man, I might, I might have to get that framed, you know? So there's several steps uh, to painting eyes. Uh, if you have a standard shaped fish or if you have flat fish, so there's two um, methods. Um, the standard fish will be looking principally out from the paper at you or down at your feet. Your flat fish is very a very different perspective because it's not looking up at you. It's looking along the plane, what we call the plane of the paper. But you're up here looking down and the fish is looking to the side. So if you have, you have, have to do a little mental and visual gymnastics to visualize what that should look like okay but we'll start easy we'll do the standard fish so your basic components are the pupil which will always be black and in this case round if you're having that fish look somewhere then the shapes change up and i i like to rotate my paper and just keep kind of this motion so I'm not changing angles. You want to leave just the smallest area between the pupil and your iris, like 164, you know, just a tiny piece. You don't do the eye painting when you're in a bad mood <laughs> or after you've had multiple cups of coffee. When I'm in, I want to say production mode, I will have stockpiled eyeless fish prints and then you know set aside an evening where I'll do I'll start off by doing just pupils and just do pupils for that evening and then come in and do irises the next night but it because you spread it out it gives the opportunity for the paint to dry so I'm using just the brown but if you look at it the iris you see white in there so mm -hmm. I'm choosing not to paint, not to put down a solid layer of brown. Okay, so it adds a second color. Look at your neighbor, look at your neighbor's <laughs> eye. You see something? A glare. Reflection. A little glare, a little reflection. Okay, so we want to put that on the fish. Sparkle. And because, yeah, yeah, don't, well, you, you two can look longly <laughs> a long time, but be inappropriate for a lot of other people. Right? So you want to put that little white reflection on the pupil, and it can be a dot. It can be a kidney bean shape where the ends are symmetrical. It could be a comma or an apostrophe, so it's asymmetrical. It could be a pie wedge with the tip of the pie you know, point it towards the center of the eye, so the pupil. <clears throat> the key point is to leave just a really thin black strip um, between the white, white reflection and the perimeter of the pupil. 
This flatfish is going to be looking along the plane, so the steps and the implementation is really different. So the first part... You're assuming we're going to use one of ours that we did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the first piece is really a piece of membrane, and I call them a banana. And you're going to do two of them and curve them out from the center of the fish. So this is the membrane that connects the eyeball proper to the fish's body. Okay, so I see kind of a curve outward. Okay, so that's the first step. Second is the pupil, and it's not going to be round. So you can see how this fish is looking along the plane of the paper out towards me. The diameter or the length of the um, pupil is well within that membrane. Now the pupil, so we're looking through kind of the clear part of the eye, so that's why we don't see an iris. The iris is tucked inside. Okay. So those are the two steps. And then we would come in with white. We would go white on the pupil again. There's your sand dab looking along the plane of the paper, not out at you. All right, this is the first one. And side. Let's get down to business though. You have a basketball too? Not that bad, not that bad. There we are, there we are. Final present. Awesome experience. This is awesome. I'm glad I could actually make it, man. Had to burn rubber straight off of work to here, but a super shout out to Steve, president of Bay Area Sports Fishers Club. And um, shout out to my bro, Edward, man, hook to cook. Came out, Danny Wu, shout out to Jess, uh, vice president of the club. Man, also big shout out to Bruce showing us how to get down very detailed on these eyes here they came out all right all right good nice details on the scales right there mm -hmm. gonna help uh clean up get on out of here i think the the ancient uh japanese fishermen were the first people to tell people fish stories man they created them fish stories but since there was no technology for taking pictures no cameras hundreds of years ago that's when they came up with the Giyutaku and they started making the fish prints so they could show people the species that they caught so they could show people the size of the fish and there were no longer fish stories they actually had some proof to the pudding hey man it was an amazing experience